So in this video, our aim is to look at what is the potential function in the disjoint set for as defined as. Because that has to be studied. Right? Because our aim is ultimately to, ultimately to do an amortized analysis of disjoint set operations that are make set, find set and link based on a poten potential function that we will be identifying for the purpose. Right. So what should be our potential function or what exactly is it? Let us just see. So we will talk about the potential of a forest defined as or denoted as phi f and this will be the sum of the pot individual potentials that is for every node x belonging to f it is a sigma of phi of x. So here we have the notion of potential of a single node. Right? Now, again potential is not static. As we know it keeps on changing after every operation. So we will talk in terms of phi q f which is going to be the sigma of x belonging to f phi q of x for all x. Now what does this q indicate? What we mean by the q is the q with operation or this indicates the potential after the q with operation. Okay. So that is our definition or that is our way of denoting it. So what exactly is our potential after the qth operation? Let us just see how it is defined for different nodes. So if we have a node x, it may be either a leaf, it may be a root, it may also be a leaf and a root at the same time. That happens when it is a single tensor or it may be a non-leaf non root right so there are three different three conditions to take care of as we said a leaf and a root together is also possible so we define our potential function phi of x in the following manner we say that if it is a leaf or a root if it is a leaf for example will be having it as alpha n x dot rank. In fact, for a leaf it is 0. So, or even if it is a root, we will be having it as alpha n x dot rank. Okay. But then what about the other cases? That is when we have a non-leaf, non-root. Now let us just see. What we would like to have is a function which is going to be less than alpha n x dot rank for a non-leaf, non-root node. Why? Because it may happen that what we want to reflect a uh, with the potential is uh, the amount of work that still needs to be done because it has to pay off for that work. So if it is a root, at some point or the other it may change into a non-root, right? So at that point what one wants is that uh, the potential should be lower than what it was when it was a root. Okay, because the work that has happened in converting it from a non-root to a root has to, uh, I mean from a root to a non-root has to be taken. So that's why there is going to be a fall in potential and subsequently if it is far from the root, we would like it to have a high potential. Whereas as it uh, gets cut due to a fine set and gets becomes a child of the root, 
at that point we like the potential to pay off for all those operations and we'd like it to have a lesser potential so that's what should reflect in our non-leaf modes so how it is defined is as follows we say that it is alpha n minus uh, level of x into x dot rank minus iter of x so that is our definition of potential for a non-leaf non-root node and alpha n x dot rank for a leaf node. So as it is a non-leaf node, its rank, what is its rank going to be? Its rank as we know is greater than or equal to 1 because it is a non-leaf. So that is how we define a potential. The next thing we are going to see is for a leaf or uh, leaf node or uh, root node it is fixed or it is known. What is the range of potential for a, an ordinary node? So something for which rank is greater than 1 and it is a non-leaf node, non-root node. So phi qx for such a node what is it less than or equal to and what is it greater than or equal to? These two are what we want to derive. Okay. So, let us have a look at what it is. So, uh, can you think how we can do that? It is easy. We can do that just by looking at what are the max and min values of this term. That is, the potential term is this. So we just have to see how big it can, can be and how small it can be and it fills up these slots. So that's what we are going to do next. So back to the potential function. So we said that it is alpha n minus level of x rank of x minus iter of x. So in order to find its minimum value just let us just assume that level x and iter x get their maximum values right. Max value of level x you know what that is? What is it? It is less than alpine so it is alpine minus. What is the max value of iter? we saw that it is rank of x, x dot rank, just a this is x dot rank, okay. so we will be having the minimum value for minimum value in alpha n minus alpha n minus 1 x dot rank minus i term of x the max value of it is x dot rank which is equal to alpha n minus alpha n plus 1 x dot rank minus x dot rank so it is 0 right and what is the max value max value again is easy to see we just have to look at the min values of these two so let us just see what is the min value of phi and min value or I mean min value of level and max value of and min value of item. We just have to see those two things. What is the min value of level of x? We have already seen that it is 0. What is the min value of iter of x? We have seen that it is 1. Right? So we just have to plug in those values now. So this is going to be alpha n minus 
mean value that is 0 x dot rank minus 1 and what is that it is alpha n x dot rank minus 1 so we get that for a non leaf node the max potential is this potential of non leaf non root right so in general for any node q now any node x we can say that phi q x is going to be less than or equal to alpha n x dot rank and greater than or equal to 0 this is for all nodes right or in general taking all nodes into consideration now as far as non uh, leaf non root nodes are concerned this is going to be strictly less than alpha n x dot rank it is going to be less than or equal to x alpha n x dot rank minus 1 whereas for root nodes it is going to be maximum value alpha n x dot rank minimum 0 if it is also a leaf so for a leaf nodes it is always 0 so that's uh, our discussion on the potential functions so to do our amortized analysis we will have to have a look at how these potential functions potential values are going to change with operations which we will see in the next lecture